Hi, my name is Tate Hartley. I'm a member of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Birmingham. Whether you are a new member or a regular parishioner, I would like to welcome you to today's online service. Please check our website for news, music, and resources for spiritual development and connections. Alleluia, Christ is risen. God be with you. Let us pray. O God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph into the kingdom of heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? 
This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the spirit is the one that testifies, for the spirit is the truth. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from the Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. 
Amen. This Easter season has been a season as we have followed along with the letter, first letter in the Gospel of John, along the way of love. First, we learned that the way of love is the way of, of life. And then we learned that we are beloved. How do we accept that we truly are loved? And then we explored Jesus, the good shepherd, and explored ourselves as good shepherds, who are not only loved, but give up our life, lay down our life for those who are sheep, who are vulnerable. And finally, last week, we, we looked at the fact that it's not, love is just not something we do, that God is love. And that is the basic truth of the universe. So we've come to the end of our series on love today. And finally, so what do we do with all of that? And John, both in the gospel and in the letter, tell us that our main task is to abide in love. It's to ground ourselves completely in love. That can seem like a very tall order. Sometimes it seems like enough when somebody just tells us that love is not a feeling, love is an action. But really, I think love wants to consume all of us, as the collect for today said, in all things and above all things. Because through that kind of love, we, and indeed God through us, is overcoming the brokenness and the violence of this world. A very daunting prospect. So how do we do that? We try harder. We can try hard every day. And I think trying is good. But I was helped recently by learning about and learning to practice something called cognitive behavioral therapy. And cognitive behavioral therapy is based on really one central idea. And that is, is that all of us, all of us have this dynamic of thinking and of feeling and of behaving or acting that make up a kind of triangle that makes up every day of our lives and propels us forward or keeps us stuck. And the central insight of cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is that if you change just one of those points, in other words, if you're feeling badly, if you behave differently, it will change the way you feel. Or if you're having negative thoughts or thoughts that you don't like and you behave differently, it can actually change how you're thinking. Or if you have a certain belief, a certain inner message that's going on and on, and you, and you stop that message and you think differently about a situation or about yourself, it can change both the way you behave and the way you feel. A very nice Trinitarian way of looking at mental health, I think, which is terrific. But it's not original, right? And it's certainly not original to this idea of love. We remember that when somebody asked Jesus what the, what the greatest commandment was, he turned it around and he says, well, what do you say? And they said, well, the first commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, feeling, and all your mind, thoughts, and all your strength, behavior. In all and through all. Love through and through. And so as I was reading John today, it occurred to me what a great way of thinking about how should we love? How do we learn to actually abide in love 
in everything. Anthony DeMello, a great Jesuit teacher from India, used to run retreats, and, and he had this wonderful way of thinking about helping people to get free. He said, you and I are shaped and formed with thoughts and feelings and behaviors that we either come by honestly through experience or through our culture, but that these, um, that these thoughts that we get from somewhere and that these feelings and that these behaviors become hardened in us so that we're not really even living anymore. We're just kind of living on a pre-programmed thing with layers and layers of old thoughts and feelings and, and behaviors. And he said, for Anthony DeMello, it was like, if we could just stop, if we could just stop, and whenever we have a thought, to notice what we're, what we're thinking about, to just stop and step back from our thought and say, I wonder why I think that. Today I was um, hearing a radio report about the mess down on the southern border and the suffering that's going on there as, as uh, we all try to figure out how to deal compassionately, and some people haven't dealt so compassionately with the suffering down there. And I realized I had all these thoughts going through my mind about, yeah, but there's immigration laws and and. And, oh, but these people are suffering and they need to get in. They are persecuted wherever they are. And I had these feelings. I had feelings of, of guilt and a little bit of fear of how to, to deal with it. And, of course, I wasn't behaving at all. I wasn't doing anything. But I was wondering what I should do. And when I stepped back in that moment to look at my thoughts, I, re I realized that a lot of my thoughts had been formed by news reports. I let other people tell me what to think. And by images, right? And I let those images kind of shape how I feel in any given moment. And of course, my behavior, which is paralysis, really, about what to do. But what if, following DeMello, I stopped to look at those thoughts and feelings and behaviors, and instead said, what would that look like if my thoughts and my feelings and my behaviors were pure love? What if I was just abiding this moment in pure love in all those different ways? Of course, it's hard to do all three at once, but what if instead of feeling kind of powerless I decided to do some, some reading and say, what's really going on at the border? Educate my thinking and change my thinking about what's going on. What if I noticed my feelings of, of both fear and guilt and decided instead, what would it mean? What would it mean to see those people on both sides of the border through the lens of love? just through the lens of love. And what would it mean for me to start to think about how I can behave, perhaps first by praying? But what if I just chose one of those, the education, or the looking with compassion, or the prayer, just one? And if cognitive behavioral therapy is right, it'll begin to change the way I think and the way I behave. And this doesn't have to be a cultural, you know, a big societal thing. It could be a situation in your family to step back and say, how am I feeling? What am I thinking about this? What are my behaviors in this situation? And how can I change one of those, just one of those, to be more loving? The idea of abiding in love, and of overcoming the world through love can be so overwhelming. But what if we just chose to go at it one little step at a time in each one of those things, you know, in one of those ways, and let the Spirit work the rest? 
I was really helped in this idea finally by something I'd like to leave you with in one of our sacred ground groups looking at racial injustice. We were talking about microaggression. Microaggressions are those things that we do to other people that are not huge wounds like beating them over a head with a pipe or something like that, but they're small little things, small phrases, small actions that we do to hurt others. Just small enough. And, and you might not even know that you're doing them sometimes, but the other person feels them and is affected by them. And our group was wondering what to, you know, we're, we're always wondering, how do we respond to this crisis of racism? And the idea came up in that group, well, what about micro-healing? What is the one small healing thing I can do when I am in situations where a person might feel devalued or persecuted? Small, in a micro way. It's not unlike just trying to change our thoughts or our feelings or our behavior, just one, one small thing. And by doing one small thing at a time, one small step at a time, with God's grace, we move to that place where God's love, God's love for us can consume us in all things and beyond all things. And that our love in our thoughts and in our feelings and in our behaviors can grow so that we too move closer and closer to loving God in all things and in through all things. My brothers and sisters, this is the way of love. It's love all the way around. It's love all the way down. And it's love in each little action, thought, and feeling we take. Amen.
I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our Bishop Mark, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people. We pray this day for our vestry as they navigate the season of transition that we are entering. Give them wise and discerning hearts and sustain them with your Holy Spirit. I ask your prayers for peace in our nation and for the well-being of all people. For those places in the world where conflict is brewing, that peacemakers may prevail and violence may be averted. Pray for peace and justice. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison, for those who continue to suffer from COVID-19, for those who are enduring painful treatments for their illnesses. We pray for those afflicted by isolation and loneliness. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Today we pray especially for Julie, the Gura family, especially Dylan, Jim Hansen, Bonnie Merrick, Christopher, Joan Valingo, Linda McLaughlin, Diane Miller, the Forrest family, Michelle Sloat, Susan Lawson, Vinnie Young, Benoff Shea, Laura Cope, John and Orly Arlene Borgeson, Nate Price, Michelle Blair, Nan Kasulos, Tom Bryce, Renee and Bernd Kem, Wally Clevisall, Jim Prescott, the Murdoch family, especially Charlotte. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, a lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. And now, let us all pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the weekend of Sunday, May 9th. We've got two announcements. Please look for the Coral Even Song, which will be found on YouTube beginning at 5 p.m. on Saturday. At 6 p.m., there will be a reception. On Sunday, as usual, our online service will be available on YouTube and on our website as well. It is Mother's Day, so we wanted to offer a special prayer to all of our mothers. And please know that we want to celebrate mothers, all those who have been mothered, and those who are mothering. So please take a moment. Let us remember we are in God's presence. Call to mind all those special people in your life for whom we pray for this weekend. Loving God, look gently upon mothers of newborn and young children. Give them energy, patience, gentleness, and happiness in these fleeting days of sticky hands and messy houses and ever-flowing laundry. Bless mothers who are raising school-aged children and teenagers. 
give them peace and joy in parenting in moments that seem both hard and wonderful all at the same time. Bless mothers who from afar watch and wonder about their adult children. Give them perspective and wisdom as their children make choices and live their own lives. Healing God, comfort all people who mourn the absence of their mother today from death or illness or because of broken and challenging relationships. Comfort those who had hoped to be mothers but have been unable to do so and those who continue to hope to become mothers. Ever-present God, embrace and comfort those mothers who mourn over the loss of their own children. Gracious God, help us to recognize all the women who have guided us and loved us like mothers, shining forth as an example of the deepness of the love you offer each of your beloved children. Bless us and keep us today in that love and always in your name we pray, amen.
And now before we go forth, may the blessing of God, who is love, come upon you this day, that you may know the peace of God, which passes all understanding. And may the love of God work through you, that the world too may be consumed and overcome by God's love. And the blessing of God, who is love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. We remain one in the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.